Gentlemen, welcome back to the frozen shithole of Hoth. We'd likely be able to afford a heat payment if and we weren't paying for that hoss. It's not the, the bank payment what gets you, it's the tooling. Today, a treat especial, Hilti miniature bandsaw. Hey, carnal! Como esta usted, mi amigo? Miniature in name alone, eh? <laughs> yeah, maxima in cost. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear his anguished cries over there. He's uh, programming uh, a VFD for me, and uh, we're not... Hey, see? <laughs> Proof! Back to the task at hand. No, not the one from last night after your wife went to bed. This Hilti come in a package of five on Father's Day, and I outfitted a new shop with uh, some of these. Now, they are costly otherwise, but not... Surprisingly, this is $229 hairs for the bare tool. It is very compact, so it's kind of a specialized use. Now, I hadn't been using it because I don't have the band. I didn't have the bandsaw blades, and I figured, well, although I'll just TIG welds this old Tony style. You know how great that fucking guy is. I figured I just <laughs> weld up a bandsaw. The thing is, these wheels are so small, the radius is so small, pink. No es bueno every single Ferdigan time, and Lord, how I tried. So I had to bite the bullet and actually buy the things. And the Jesus, because on account of the, the, the union of the postal workers is on strike here in Canada, I couldn't get the Jesus things. Let me just tell you how this postal strike is affecting me. <laughs> right, the food right out of my kid's mouth. The, 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 the missus, she does all the Etsy stuff and uh, had to shut that down. I just couldn't. You know, and especially even now they're not on strike, but they got uh, resolved back to work legislatively. You know how well that goes when someone forces you back to work, how, how fucking hard you're going to work, you know, especially with the backlog of Christmas stuff and so forth. We just shut her down for the year and have another go at her after the union's back, uh, back to work proper. Not to mention the poor Duclos glaucoma medication. Man's got to see. Getting down to short rations. I tell you, the check is in the mail, buddy. I got her down to the ugly bits. It's just like having squirrel. Far better without the fur. I do like the countenance of these Hilties. They aesthetically are very pleasing to me because they have reasonably simple lines. They ain't got none of that pew pew uh, gerbling of regular tools. I think hopefully regular tools are going back to the non greebled uh, you know, that transformer looking bullshit. Some interesting design features here. Some good, some bad. We'll give you the good news first. This guy, glass fiber reinforced uh, PA6, a nice rigid, sturdy thickness, and also got some steel inserts. What for the grub screws to preload this guy or keep it in uh, axially, thusly. You see this pickle fork's got a bit of a taper to her. And all this does is this heavy die spring seats on here this preloads the blade so you can never get any more blade tension than what this guy this die spring this heavy die spring is putting out and then to release it we just turn this cam the cam bears on this round section here a little bit of grease on there just releases it see that little pin there just releases it and the shaft of rooney goes through the idler. Now the idler itself is an interesting uh, case, thermoset plastic, but it's not PA6 uh, glass fiber reinforced, what you'd expect. This is actually po uh, PBT, polybutyl, it's a polyester. It's an interesting choice, but I think they chose it for its um, ease of moldability. It's reasonably stiff. It's all reasonably good at just about everything, not nearly as, as good so as poly uh, as the nylon, but in this case, it's molded. And then we have some, looks like vulcanized rubber, uh, friction material banding on there. Two bearings, two needle bearings, two is always better than one. We, bearings work in pairs, right? You never wanna have just one bearing, so. That's uh, good that there's two on there. And the, the thrust, however, is taken up by these Delrin, de, del, de, del, 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 yeah, plastic bushings are taking up the, the strain. Of course, because these are cantilevered off, there is a moment arm on there what wants to tweak them over. So there's going to be some axial thrust taken up by these guys. 
you get in there, especially if you're cutting pipe or anything like that, very abrasive, uh, abrasives and plastics. Yeah. Not the beast, I would say. And on this guy, so here's the drive pulley, or this would be the drive shiv. We see a metal injection molded gear, what's been secondary molded inside or molded into this pulley itself. And of course the, the bearings are pressed in after the fact, but this is one piece now, never to be laying asunder. A little bit ugly here, pug fugly on the inside of this. We'll have a closer peek. Rusted right to fuck. So this unfortunately sat in some dank, dirty warehouse in Shaman or some similar shithole and rusted prior to it getting assembled and branded Hilti. So uh, no es fucking bueno on that shaft. You don't want a rusty shaft running on bearings. It's just not conducive to long life. Surprisingly to mine eye, at least from the outward countenance, this whole assembly is aluminum, die cast aluminum. Kind of messed up a little bit here on the machining. It came in here with a dull uh, countersinker and, and rolled over that. ADC 1-2, uh, that's an alloy, yeah, you can see. That's a specially formulated alloy for very thin, cross sections with with minimal draft angle a very 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 high in silicon so it has probably 10 percent silicon and got a bit of tramp iron in there probably three percent copper it allows it to nucleate very tiny tiny grains and you get a real nice surface finish on all of these cold chamber cast parts um, uh, you look at the work what some tool and die maker went into to machining this out. On the electrical side, we have the Pixie choreography device here, all uh, monolithically encoded in a preformulated such and such. PA66 glass fiber reinforced. You can see they've added on as an afterthought, a big, a big capacitor for noise suppression. This is a mylar film type. Why they would squeeze that up so much, I have no idea, but you can see inside there's no user serviceable parts because it's been completely and wholly epoxied together. We have here, moving onwards, the Defon switch. This is cute where they have the trigger lock, the guard, not only physically stopping the Defon switch, but also giving you an enable signal through a micro switch here on a little cam. That's the click what you hear. No click at all, no snap action on the Defon because all it is doing is sending a uh, uh, analog signal from a potentiometer on a board over to the confuser and the confuser turns it off and on. Now there's no bellows on this input shaft so there's going to be get some goop in there. There might be a, f a little felt bushing but there is also built into the default which is normally built in to the casement of the tool is a slide a linear slide so that you can't tweak this over if you give her the old 200 pound gorilla routine the other thing is there's there's three that's built into here as well it's built into the uh, over casement so we we got triple protection so i spoke too soon this is doing some switching despite not having any snappy snap snap action See by the size of the, I'm getting distractimicated here by the hot and sultry breath of my shop brethren. What we have here is a DC brushed motor, uh, Johnson brand motor. There's a, a huge Johnson. <laughs> I hear that a lot actually. And, ah, hold on, hold on. I, I, I fucking, I, I, I sweat. I, 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 I cannot work under these what? conditions. The old Duclaw apparently is finished. So, oh, what was I looking at? Yeah, the motor, which uh, sends torque and speed into a gearbox, reduces the speed, increases the torque. And then we have our final reduction here on the actual pulley itself. Uh, I was going to guess that it'd be about 100 feet per minute, but it's way faster than that. 
550 feet per minute. So if and you're cutting any amount of thick steel, uh, your blades are not going to last because that's far beyond the, the reach and scope of any typical high speed steel machine. There's another interesting design solution, which the bear you see there normally there'd be two ball bearings and I, I ball bearings are not meant for point loading. So to have a, a ball bearing running directly onto something as a slide. But having said that every now for years and years and years, every bandsaw in existence has this same setup only with straight bearings. In this case, we also have some centered metal, metal injection molded bushings uh, seem to be spacers. If you look at the weeble wobble on this, absolutely atrocious. And that is why you don't want to use fasteners for a precision ground uh, ID. A fastener, of course, rolled threads, so forth. They're not ground, they're not sized to be pins. But in this case, we're using them as pins and I guess we can get away with it, but it's not ideal. You can see how much weeble wobble we have in there on account of using that that bolt as a pin and all of the fasteners in here had the blue Loctite or this blue schmoo pre pre lubricated on there in this case in order to keep that from rattling out we have a trilobe fastener kind of chews its own threads and stays in that way because the the thread is peened over so well it's it's an oddball shape so it's tighter and looser but yeah, there's the bushing, what actually firmly locates it. And the way that it's made, it kind of, it's it kind of kitty corner to each other. So it tells me that there's, they're making up for some slop in the system. You have a look at that slop there. The bearing located by a bolt situation aside, this is a very robustly designed tool. You see even the motor housing solid there is no moving that at all now healthy has never been a prosumer tool it's always been quite expensive just about got to be jose grande de Nero to afford one but really they're catered more towards the contractor market rather than the prosumer now we're starting to see these in the homeless death spot and i'm not sure if they're in the blows or not the thing is is they are a tool that makes it easier for businesses to purchase because it costs money for a business to send someone to go and buy tools at the homeless dust spot, right? So if you have a tool rep, you can bring tools in on account and then you pay down your account. It's kind of like the snap on. You pay a lot of money for snap on, but you don't need the money up front, eh? Dollar down and a dollar a month. The same thing, some fucking scumbag will show up in a red van give you whatever tools you need to do the job and you just put down whatever money they tell you to and then make a payment. So cash flow wise, especially in the contractor business, cash flow is king. Many a good business has gone tits up because they haven't been able to manage their cash flow. So this, the Hilti kind of caters toward a, a different market than the prosumer single tradesman type thing because they, they're, they're an optional method of financing your business growth in that you can get the tool right off the hop and then you pay it down as you go also you got some fucking sound bag service in you he gets his knee pads out and intermediating the build up here just have a gander you got to put a fair bit of pressure on that die spring to get her to release you see that's the cam there pretty simple but you know very simple very robust mechanism it's battery time before we get this uh, turn and see if she lets the smoke out. In my opinion, best battery in the business. Maybe not the highest capacity, but longest longevity of any battery. Very well engineered and very well built, these batteries are. Sam socket cells all encased, all uh, chrome plated, nickel plated tabs, full urethane epoxy. On the, on the board itself for the control circuitry. And there's no, there's no external button to check the charge. What they do cleverly is they use the release buttons that actuates a momentary, just a tactile switch. And that tells you how much 
chooch is left in the batteries. These things, yeah, in my opinion, best battery in the business. Uh, INR 18650 25R SAMA sockets. These are high quality batteries. And they've even gone so far as to put in dielectric schmoo on the contacts for the, the sliding uh, PCB here, how the, how the PCB attaches. Who does that? Who puts dielectric schmoo on their battery? Aesthetics and fanboyism aside, they do make a very robust tool. They're not in that cycle of coming out with the latest and greatest new drill every Christmas. It's just not, it's not, you know, they're not looking into lights and, and uh, pliers and, and tape measures and boots and, and lady scarves. Like, they're tools. And I don't mind paying more for a tool when I know parts are going to be available. And you can fix the Jesus thing yourself because they're, they're not all... You know, they, they go out of fashion so quick that you can't get parts for them. Now these are made in China. They do got crappy tags on them. Everything apparently is made in China nowadays. Going into uh, another thing I wanted to reiterate now, going into a rental store, all these, all, all these reviews, you can see what lasts because the rental places go, uh, they live and die by the value of the tool. They're not going to buy the most expensive tool. They're going to buy the tool that provides them the most value, that provides them the most profit. So go into a rental store and go and look at what they are renting out. Chances are there's going to be a lot of Hilti in there. There might be some Milwaukee, like a whole hog, something like that. They might have some other crappy little things from DeWilt or, or Makita. Now we got the dick in the vise. Very light in the hand is this. Quite compact. A little Wiener Schleiden. Ein bisschen. And this is a very fine bimetal saw. So it might not be able to carry the chip all the way through the cut. We might have a problem cutting this thick cross section. Of course, that's the limiting factor on bandsaws is the gullet in the is the gullet in betwixt the teeth it needs to be big enough so that the chip can roll along in that gullet and then be extracted at the tail end. If and it's not big enough, it balls up in there and uh, yeah, bad things happen. So we're going to try this out. Now this has a handle somewhere which I mislaid. Let's move that a little. I got better purchase. Okay, quite quite fast on the cutting speed. It's also got a wave action to clear the um, clear the kerf. Very fast. So you will be wearing through these blades on steel, but as you can see, proof in the puddings and you eating. We'll try some EMT and maybe some plastique. Here's some EMT. Of course, you want to keep this around for blowpipe purposes, flinging marrets at people. Uh, blowpipes are actually a restricted weapon here in Canada, so uh, I mean it's strictly for electricity. Characteristically, we ain't got no plastic. This thing's a weapon for EMT. No doubt be good for uh, cast iron pipe as well. A black iron pipe, either sked 40, sked, sked 80. Uh, yeah, you see, it do sk Whoa, that's fucking hotter than a $2 pistol. Uh, sked 80 be no problem at all either. Allow to me to play for you the song of my people. In any case, you'll be the first to find out if, uh, if it craps out on me. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Now, so in essence, what you're telling me is that Hitachi in the application notes should have specifically said not suitable for powering the Franken Jeep. Yeah, I think at like the end of chapter seven, we're gonna have to, in the memo part, we're gonna have to write right. down that unsuitable for vehicular usage.